So if you're interested in a small, lightweight, relatively cheap multiband beam, then this video is probably worth a watch. Now, of course, I'm talking about the hex beam. And as of late, I've had some great enjoyment in developing hex beams. So my um, first hex beam was a 20 meter through 10, and I had the option to add six, and I still could do that. But I wanted to take it a step further. But I wanted to help some of you out there that felt that even that antenna was just a little bit too big for you. So I've removed 17 and I've removed 20. And that's actually made a, the antenna much, much smaller. Now, the diameter of this antenna is just about four, just over four meters. So if you have an, a garden that's four, meet, four and a half by four and a half, or better if it was five by five meters, you can actually put this antenna up. Now we're at the top of the, the, the solar cycle, 25, and band conditions are such that you're, these, you know, 20, uh, sorry, 15, 12, and 10 are going to give you some, a lot, a lot of fun. And because we've got um, Aurora more often on six, you're going to be able to use six meters much more often too. Now, lessons learned from the, the first hex beam, I wanted to actually improve things. Um, now, as, as before, everything on this hex beam can actually be um, built with off-the-shelf components and that was actually critical so no matter where you are in the world fingers crossed you should actually be able to build this now there's an old saying um, that a boss of mine actually taught me very good boss and the saying is um, if I remember this right bat batnik or batnik and it's best available technology not incurring excessive costs now, if you think about that, you basically want to do the best that you can, um, but spend, you know, only what you need to. So don't spend more money than you really need to is the key. And that's what I've I, I've tried to do here. Now, I'll link down in the description to my Google Drive location. Now, it's public access, so you've got a uh, viewing access, so you can open it and view it, download a copy, do what you want with it. But all the materials that I've used, and there's some instructions in there, there too, some of the key details, the key dimensions that if you actually want to work to. And I've actually put some uh, templates. So if you want to, for example, drill out the uh, base plate, all you need to do is buy a 150 millimeter diameter of the aluminium. Uh, you could use stainless actually, but it'd be a lot uh, harder to work with. Um, I cut out, print out the template, um, stick it to the to the to the disc and then drill your holes so I'm making it really really easy for you now there is one key difference to this I'm using a different center post now unlike the commercial guys or most of the commercial guys that use a coaxial center post I don't think that's too handy for the uh, homebrew builder that's exactly what I am and, and most of you will be too so I've went down uh, the balanced feeder route or think about ladder line so I have two aluminium strips, actually aluminium bars. They're 19 mil wide by 1.6 millimeter thick. And I have these running parallel and that gives me my 50 ohm feeder. And there's actually a drilling, the, the, the drawings actually on that, um, on that Google Drive as well on the, the tab at the bottom. Um, and you can actually drill that out to the, because it's actually critical where you drill the holes in that. Now, this, this, uh, this, this center post, um, this actually, as I say, a lot of development works went into this, but because it's balanced feeder and you know you've got to keep metal away from a balanced feeder, I've had to use a non-conductive centre post. In this case, I've used a GRP tube. So this is fibreglass, which is 25 millimetres in diameter. I've used the um, RSB clamps or Stouff clamps, uh, polypropylene clamps, I think that they are. Um, these are class, class threes, I believe. Um, 325 I think is the, is the, is the code for them um, and, and there's really not a lot to it um, in the Google Drive there's also a load of pictures which you can actually take a, a, a look at um, this is just really just an overview I want to just you know get the antenna out there um, to, to do a complete um, build video is actually a lot, a lot of work for me and I do a lot of things like you know, I write production processes for a living, so I don't always want to be doing that in my spare time. And if I wanted to make a, a, a proper, um, a, I'd call it a work instruction, but a manufacturing instruction with this, so with all the pictures, it probably be the best part of a week's worth of work, 
35, 40 hours to do it right. Um, so I may do that and I may chip away at it, but I think there's probably enough information uh, in the Excel sheet with all the tabs along the bottom. There's enough pictures, which is if you've got a little bit of DIY knowledge, you can see what I've done and that you'll actually be able to, 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 to build this. Now, the base plate on this, you can use it with class 1 clamps or class 2 clamps and that depends on the size of tubes that you get because your 11 meter spreader arms actually fit into those. So that's a decision. So um, I'm using um, a half inch aluminium tubes. I think they're like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millimeter walls. Um, but these can be quite hard to get. But a subscriber actually told me about um, stainless steel tubes on Amazon. Um, they're half mil wall thickness. And if you're lucky, your 11 millimeter uh, poles will fit into these. Um, it's quite a tight fit, but it, it should actually work. Uh, if You might just need to play about which poles actually go into it. On the poles themselves, when you buy the poles in the kits, they come with their ferrules. Um, and I would recommend to just keep using those ferrules. I changed them for that stainless steel tube again from Amazon because I wanted to, to tighten up the fit. But what I found was that not every pole would fit into every tube and I had to do a little bit of mix and match to actually get it to actually go because some of them some of them wouldn't fit just with manufacturing tolerances. So keep the original ferrules. Um, to set this antenna up, I set it up last night and it took me... Now it was on the ground, wasn't on the mast, but it was ready just to fit to a mast and it took me 15 minutes. And that's after doing... That's actually setting it up the very first time. Um, from, from scratch, but you know, I do have experience on my um, the bigger antenna, the bigger hex beam. The weight is only four kilograms, so it's 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 really really light. Um, I think I said that we're using all off the shelf materials, so no matter where you are in the world, you're going to be able to build this. Um, the wire that I'm using, actually, the radiating, so the director and the reflectors, because that's what you have on a hex beam. I'm actually using DX Commander DX10 wire. I wanted to use copper wire for a change because I used stainless steel wire on the, the first antenna. And, I, and just for a difference, I wanted to use something that was a copper wire. So I think, I believe that the DX10 is about 0.75 millimeter for reference if you just want to use standard um, electrical cable. But the DX10, it's actually really flexible in cold temperatures. It, it, it's really, you know, the sort of standard tri-rated core stuff, it, it can get quite stiff, especially if you're putting up up and down portable all the time. Now, the wire lengths um, that you can see in the tab and the, the bill of materials file, um, those lengths are what I'm currently using. And if you go into the pictures, you can see the SWR sweeps. They're not absolutely perfect but every band is absolutely in. It's got a good SWR, so I'm not going to muck about because I would need to trim off literally millimetres to get it to come in. So it's actually, um, it's just not worth bothering about. Okay, now, as for the performance of a hex beam, I want you to have a little listen to this. Now, I know we're at the top of the sunspot cycle, but remember this was 10 metres, it was long path, and just some unbelievable contacts. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Mexico, Mexico Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray. Mexico, Mexico Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray, over. Okay, Mexico, Mexico Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray, is that correct? Roger, Roger, Peter, you're 5 and 7, 57, name is Colin. Charlie, Oscar, Lima, Italy, November, over. Yeah, also 55, also 55, Peter, name is Colin. Colin is the name over, just outside Edinburgh, over. Mike, Mike, Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray, over, Moz. Roger, Mexico, Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray, 
Now, I'm not saying you couldn't make those contacts without a hex beam. Of course you could. But having the hex beam, having that directivity really made the difference. Now, those stations were long past. So I was pointing roughly over South America from here in Scotland. I spun that beam 180 degrees and I could not hear those stations on the back of the beam. So that gives you an idea of the front to back on the hex beam. It's, it's, it's really, really good. It's maybe not as good as a Moxon, but it's, it's multiple S points of front to back. And that's another thing that makes it really, really good. Now, I don't know what else to say. It, you know, let me down, let me know down in the comments if you want to make me to make any specific videos on this. Uh, 15 through 6 hex beam if there's something that you're just not quite sure about and I'll try to do that and I will try to update the uh, the Google Drive with the files and maybe try and get some more instructions in there if, and make it you know a bit easier for you to build but you only need um, simple tools, I made a video like that I'll link that playlist as well um, but simple hand tools, hacksaws um, a drill it really is the only power tool that you actually need. I use a, a battery one, but you could use a mains one. That's really the only power tool that you need. You could do everything else with a with a with a hacksaw, you know, um, Allen key spanner. There's not a lot of stuff involved. Now, as as with all my other antennas, I'm not selling this antenna. Unfortunately, I I do get occasionally I get people asking me, you know, please build one of these for me. Um, I can't, I just don't have the time and I don't have the resource to do that and the little time that I have, I really enjoy developing these antennas so saying that if somebody wants to take this on um, and run with it themselves and develop kits, sell kits, sell them fully built you know, it, it, it wouldn't bother me, go ahead, fill your boots and at least that way some people may actually get their hands on uh, one of these antennas and they're, because they're maybe just not able, you know, uh, physically able to actually build this antenna. But it's really, really small. Um, it, it, it's, it's a great way of getting your feet wet with actually getting a beam antenna without spending a lot of money and it's going to get you a lot, a lot of really good contacts. Okay, guys, as I say, let me know down in the comments. And just one more quick thing. If you like these videos, then please, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help me. Um, and it makes it gets it just gets the video out there more. And, and you know, I can share these projects with uh, even more people. Um, and they can hopefully build along too. 73, guys. All the best. Catch you in the next one.